Hello Space Fairies, welcome to Fan Art July. It's almost video every day in July, but I don't have the time to make one every day, and also everything is going to be a piece of fan art. So, Fan Art July. Today I'll be fangirling over my childhood favourite cartoon, which I still actually watch a lot, and that is, ah, Real Monsters. And finally, finally you guys get to hear the story of how this ridiculous and autumn cartoon saved my life once. So, when I was a kid, we didn't have Sky or Cable or anything until I was quite a bit older, I guess, so everything I enjoyed watching were shows you could watch immediately before or after school on BBC or ITV, which at the time were the only two channels that really showed kids' cartoons and stuff. A simpler time. We hated it. Real Monsters debuted in 1994 and eventually came to England on free channels in, like, 1995? I saw the show in passing, but I was only five or six at the time and I didn't really understand what I was watching other than it was very weird and that I loved that. But it was also only on during the weekdays and only on at 8am, which is around the time I would start leaving to go to school. So all I knew of the show was the opening credits and then I'd see like five minutes of it and have to turn the TV off. Smash cut to 1998 or 1999, I can't remember which, when my family first gets cable and Real Monsters has been off the air for over a year and I've long forgotten about it. Suddenly Nickelodeon and Disney Channel and Boomerang and there's like three more BBCs probably now because it's the 90s and anything is possible except broadband. Don't try and load videos on the internet, it won't happen. So I start growing up as a Nicktoons kid. So there was like Cat Dog, Angry Beavers, Rugrats, Hey Arnold and very suddenly afternoon reruns of real monsters. Literally, I get home from school one day and there it is, just sitting in the TV guide. It's a show I kind of half remembered, half loving, and it was brought back to the forefront of my memory and it's spooky and creative. And at this point in my childhood, I had already kind of fully established in my mind that I was going to grow up to be either weird or an artist or both. And spoiler alert, it was both. So the show is perfect for me and it has monsters and at times a fairly abstract or I guess sardonic sense of humour about it. And like one of the main characters, Ickers, who was like purple and had big rabbit ears, he just straight up suffered from extreme anxiety, which was something that I was struggling with at the time. So I related to him and he's still one of my favourite characters. So this show just immediately wins a place in my heart and I watch it religiously. My mum even helps me to record episodes onto tapes using a VCR because that's just what we had to do if we wanted to keep things forever. Piracy was harder in the 90s, guys. And honestly, I... Yeah, I still have those tapes. I still have these big VHS tapes that I cannot use because I don't have a VCR anymore. And they've got these little sticky labels on the front that says like Real Monsters episodes one to four. Now, everything I was watching, they were all rerun episodes because no new episodes have been made since like 1997, but it was all new to me because I had those years of just not having cable. So I had to make sure that I saw every single one. I didn't want to miss a beat with the show. Which is why I was so devastated when randomly halfway through rerunning season three they just changed the show time like they changed it i got home from school and it wasn't on it was hey arnold probably so i checked the tv guide and they'd moved it from its usual 4 p.m slot to 6 a.m on saturday mornings what like i was properly annoyed not at the show more at nickelodeon i guess i used to write letters to nickelodeon studios when i was a kid and i think that's one of the things i mentioned was that why did you change the time of this awesome show anyway but that didn't really matter because I loved this show so much I started going to bed earlier on Friday nights so I could wake up earlier on Saturday mornings to watch it. I was one of those rare kids that actually liked a lion so on weekends I'd usually sleep in until 9. But instead of sleeping in until 9 on Saturdays I woke up at 5.30, got dressed, went downstairs, turned on the TV just in time to watch Real Monsters at 6. And here comes the story. It was on one of these mornings, on a Saturday, where instead of being in my bed at 6am, I was downstairs early to watch the show, which I would not have been if it was still on at 4pm on a weekday. I was still downstairs watching the show at around 6.15am when the huge bookshelf by my bed collapsed onto where my head should have been. I don't know if a bookcase to the head would have necessarily killed an eight-year-old, but that thing was hardwood and it had encyclopedias and Bibles on it, so I think I dodged some kind of bullet either way. I heard the crash and there was like panicked footsteps and I went upstairs and I was just like, oh, I can't see my bed anymore, it's just covered in very heavy stuff. But because I was so dedicated to this show, I changed my routine to be downstairs and not in my bed at six in the morning where I should have been 
when it collapsed. I still have my VHS tapes of Real Monsters, and I even recently bought the entire collection on DVD. And you can bet I've already ordered, like, they have the new Funko Pops of Ickus, Oblina, and Crumb, the three main characters. They have made those in pop vinyl form now. So I've got them. I've got them on pre-order. And even if it hadn't saved me from a potentially serious injury, you know what? Real Monsters would still be one of my favourite shows and still have a place in my heart today as it does. So thanks for watching and thanks to Real Monsters and I guess Nickelodeon that I'm still here to make these videos.